Okay, guys, um, welcome to the video. We're going to talk about the first Aufgabe from the Protocol Zoa 2020. So this uh, exercise, they're, ask, they're giving us a matrix, this matrix over here, and they're saying it's a uh, matrix over the real numbers. And it's extremely important, pay attention to uh, whether it's a real number, complex number, or whatever here, because you're gonna need it later on. Okay, and the first part of the question, they're going to ask us to find the determinants. And the determinant, um, there's two ways to find the determinant. Uh, we're only going to talk about one of the ways, and that's called uh, the cofactor method. If you don't know what the cofactor method is, I encourage you to pause the video now and uh, YouTube it. It's very simple. Uh, okay, so. Assuming uh, you all know how the cofactor method works, um, you know that you're allowed to strike out either a row or either a column. It can be any row or any column. But of course, we want to make our life easy and we should therefore strike out the row or column that has the most number of zeros in it because it's going to simplify our calculations later on. Uh, if you just look at this matrix, the first thing you should do is not dive into the cofactor method right away, but uh, ask yourself, is it possible to get more zeros in uh, the matrix? Specifically, you see that there's a zero here. And of course, we want to have either more zeros in the same row or more zeros in the same column, because that way when we strike out that row or that column, we'll be able to uh, take advantage of the zeros. Uh, here, obviously, you can uh, strike out um, this one here, you know, by subtracting the third row from the first row, then you'd get a zero up here. Or you can make a zero here by adding uh, the third row to the second row, and then you'll get a zero here as well. So let's see how we do that. So that's what I said here. The first step you want to do is eliminate to get more zeros as possible to make your calculation easier. And you do that by, yeah. Well, here I've decided to you know, make a zero here, and I do that by adding the third row to the second row to get a new second row. So if you do that, it's quite simple. You get this, and now you see that you have a two zeros in the third column. Now we're ready to start our calculation. There's no point in trying to simplify it further, okay? So uh, now finding the determinant, as we said, we're gonna use the cofactor method, all right? And the cofactor method is when you strike out the row or column, in this case, it's the third column because it has the most number of zeros in there. And uh, ignore that for now. So when you strike that out, uh, well, my bad, not ignore that. Pay attention to that. Do not forget your signs, guys. This uh, sign, you know, here, when you strike out this column, it's going to be zero times this, uh, this lower matrix here, the minor matrix, and um, minus this zero times the minor matrix of so this one, this one, this one, and this one, but zero times anything is zero, so we ignore that. Plus, why is it a plus? Because here it's a plus sign, right? So plus, a plus one times the minor matrix that you get out of striking out this column and the row that contains your A plus one. So, uh, in effect, we're left with only the A plus one, and it's a plus A plus one because of the sign map, right? Times the determinant determinant, that, that's what the straight lines here mean. It's another notation, instead of writing debt, uh, you can write it with a straight line. It also means determinant. So in effect, the determinant of this big matrix is just A plus one times the determinant of the lower matrix. The determinant of the lower matrix is easy to find because we can use the, um, the cheat rule uh, for two by two matrices because the determinant of two by two matrices is the product of this diagonal minus the product of this diagonal. Okay, so yeah, I suppose I should point here. 
this times that minus this times that. And we'll see that over here, right? Our a plus one is still here, all right? And then it's uh, this times that gives you minus two a squared plus six a minus the product of uh, these two guys. And that gives you this. And if you simplify it further, um, you'll see that it factors out nicely and neatly into uh, these two factors. So that's your determinant of the entire matrix. All right. Imagine if we didn't have a zero here, then we would have another one of these. All right. It would be uh, it would be your what you had before. It would be a minus one times the lower matrix two a a minus one a minus one a minus one. You don't want to do that. It's easier to just get rid of it in the first place. And that's your answer. That's your determinant. The second part of the question is uh, they're going to ask for which value of the A is the entire matrix uh, invertible. All right. And here you just have to remember a rule. Um, the reason why the rule works is more complex, and, but you can understand it if you want, but it's going to take some time for the purposes of this video, we're just going to remember that a matrix is invertible exactly when it's determinant. So this guy right here is not equal to zero. So a matrix is invertible when its determinant is not zero, right? So you gotta ask yourself, well, when is the determinant equal to zero? When it's equal to zero when a is minus one, all right? And when a is minus one, oh, well, okay. So in other words, your a cannot be uh, minus one, right? But what can a be? A can be any real number. Why? And here's why you have to pay attention to here, because it's a real matrix. That means a can be any real number, but not minus one, because minus one makes the determinant equal to zero. And that's why I wrote it as a set, right? And you probably want to write it as a set as well because it's the set of all numbers, all real numbers except minus one, all right? The next part, they ask for, uh, for which value, for which value of A that is an integer is the matrix invertible in the uh, the field of three by three integers? Okay, uh, I'm not going to explain why that is. Uh, you just have to remember another rule, and the rule is that a is invertible in the integers in the field of integers exactly when its determinant is this time the determinant is one or minus one in the previous case in the general case a matrix is invertible when the determinant is not equal to zero but in the special case of z three times three it's invertible when a is when the determinant is one or minus one all right and well, you gotta ask yourself, when is our determinant uh, equal to one or minus one? And you're quickly gonna see that you can't really solve this equation uh, by factors. And I think they're mean to do that, but it's, you know, it's a quadratic equation. So you can, you can try, you know, set your determinant equal to minus one, and then set your determinant equal to one, try to solve it. You'll see that you won't be able to solve it normally. So you have to use a quadratic equation and you'll get some crazy answer like this one it's a is one over root two or no sorry one minus one over root two or one root minus, something like that right and the there's gonna be four of them right uh four answers because the quadratic equation returns two answers for each of your uh each of your uh, zeros. Um, obviously, none of these are an integer value, so that means there is no integer value that makes uh, a not equal to 
uh, that makes a sorry there is no integer value for a that makes the determinant equal to one or minus one so a is the member of nothing 